Hello and welcome back to another day in the arena. It's me, it's CGB, and today is the first day of my competitive historic brawl vacation. Yes, yes, we're gonna kick it off with an absolute banger, a card that's been banned in multiple formats, but still legal in this particular format. It's Uro, Titan of Nature's Wrath. This, if you didn't live through its time in standard, is an absolute nightmare that keeps coming back over and over. Unlike most commanders, where you keep sending it to the command zone and getting it taxed, Uro gets around that, because you can leave it in the graveyard and use escape to bring Uro back over and over, as long as you can keep filling your graveyard with sweet spells. What are the best spells to fill your graveyard with? counter spells counter spells that have countered your opponent's stuff that's way better than milling yourself for example so there are so many counter spells this this deck is loaded with counter spells it also has ramp cards uh, especially like instant speed land ramp cards like gross spiral and because uro has land ramp built in we need a very high quantity of land so that when we cast uro we're always hitting our little land acceleration thing and then we get ahead on mana and we take over so we have 46 lands if you also count the modal dfc lands that are in the deck 46 that should be enough to hit our uro activation often. The rest of the deck is designed around stopping our opponent from making battlefield progress and eventually grinding them into dust with the life gain and card draw from our commander. It's a very competitive one that currently plays in the A tier, but I want to make the case that Uro should be an S tier commander. And when you have a commander that plays in a lower tier than it's probably powered for, that can be a really high win rate, it can complete your dailies quickly, and it can give you all those happy brain chemicals of smashing your opponents to bits. Let's dive in. Let the Uro competitive historic broad nonsense begin. Well, this is a hand we could keep, but against Magda with these four and more expensive cards, heck no. We throw that back. Uh, we go first. So this make disappear does hit Magda. I'm worried about a Null and Swan Song doing anything against a mono red dwarf treasure deck but we're going to keep it because countering magda is that good and maybe brainstorm can help us fix this draw magda is one of the commanders that plays in borderline hell queue like actually really near the top i think it's honestly one of the scams of the format now speaking of the scams of the format we're about to miss our land drop in our like 46 land deck and we don't have any more lands in sight so this is bad this is very, very bad. But maybe we can scare our opponent into not playing their commander with our open mana and our blueness. The seven dwarves. See, we let that happen. We let that happen. Uh, we need to draw into land very badly. So I'm going to go ahead and cycle here and try to get through these not land cards. There's a fabled passage. We pass. We might take a beating from some dwarves, but we gotta find the mana. All right, Breakneck Berserker. Now this is an interesting one because we could hit this with Make Disappear. And if we don't, the Magda next turn is protected and the Make Disappear doesn't hit it anyway. In theory, we should hit this with Make Disappear, but we could go for Grow Spiral. And if we Grow Spiral into a land and then play Make Disappear, we're definitely doing it. But if it's anything other than a land, we're so far behind and it's so bad. So if it's a land on top, we're gonna draw it anyway and things are gonna be great. Let's counter this. Actually, that's not true because we're going to sacrifice this. So was there a land on top? Guess we won't know. <laughs> it also had to be like an untapped land. So who knows? Oh, I think I just saw it was a Dream Root Cascade. Burned. Okay, but hey, we got there. We got to the lands we needed for the Kindred Denial on the Magda. Mm -hmm. I wish I could shrug back, but I don't have that one queued up. Opponent doing everything they can to not play their commander. Which is probably good. It's probably what they should do as now they get to start out muscling us on mana which they couldn't do before however uh it's our time to start playing uro we do need to hit a land with uro though because we have two dfc's in hand now and we miss it's not good it's 
So now the pain begins as uh, Magda starts cranking out treasures. At least we get something we can annul. Something else we could have annulled. They are having a game. Now, will they use these treasures, though, to protect Magda? Nope. Pact of Negation. What's going to happen this turn? Magda for Embercleave? That would be fine. Magda for some kind of dragon? You line up the shot, says that would be fine. Play this tapped. Bring out Uro. Hey, lands. So we're pulling through some land difficulty to be competitive here. Uh-huh. The infantry, a dwarf, gets bigger when you cast spells. The boots, yep. Let's go. Everybody. That's a lot of treasure. Okay, what do we block? Do we block the Magda? It looks like they're going in with the treasures. Let's see what they get. And does it kill Uro somehow? It's an artifact or a dragon, so they can get like Meteor Golem here. And ruin us. Let's see if that's what's in their deck. Yep. Wrecked. Destroyed. Um, decline. So I don't know how we get out of this. They are though down to one treasure, but they're making three a turn. So they'll have that back in no time. They have Fable, we'll swan it. That helps. We'll take those right off the top. Unfortunately, they can rebuild pretty easily with Boots and Magda. We could have packed it, though. Did we pack the Boots? Hmm. Strands them for a turn, strands me for a turn. But yeah, okay. Not the greatest five mana counter spell of my life. Uh, let's get a naturalize. Insight off the top, not particularly great, but we are at enough to bring Uro back again next turn. So here come the dwarves again. Plundering Barbarian is a good one. Makes a treasure right now. Makes another. So they're up to five treasures next turn on the attack. Do we naturalize one of these treasures to keep them from having the sacrifice next turn? I think we do. We could save it for what they fetch, but what if they fetch another thing with a great ETB that ruins Uro, right? All right, Uro's back. Given all that's happened in this game, I'm pretty surprised that we're in it. Hmm. I'm thinking I need to counter this Meteor Golem. This is a dwarf, though, and it does attack with haste, so it gets them to five, so we can't allow it. I did not realize that was a dwarf. That adds a lot to Magda. That's a pretty good, that's a pretty good specialized card out of alchemy. All right, Uro, go toe to toe, toe with the seven. Two-handed axe, double strike, okay. I, what? I guess it's an artifact. Didn't see that one coming. Red deck's full of surprises, eh? All right, so we decline, leave that there. Hopefully get back to bringing Uro out again very soon. Let's get, we're so far behind, it's really hard to cast these expensive spells. But we're getting there. We're on four. All right. Shark Typhoon Tome Siphoner. Interesting. They're going up to the right number again. This, though, gets back Rebuke. 
So I think that's the play. We're at 12. With Uro possibly coming back again very soon. All right, pass turn. Still awkward mana costs, even after the cost reduction. Yep, there's a drum. That's a good way to make treasure without getting in the red zone. Another seven dwarf, yep. An infantry, yep, bring him out. Bring him out, bring him out. Okay. Hmm. Do I try to ambush this with the Shark Typhoon and then siphon Rebuke on their turn so they're not prepared for it? If they're prepared for the Rebuke, they'll probably do things a lot differently. Mm, but what else can they really do differently? Not much. All right. I'm curious what they'll get. Ember Cleave? Just punch me as hard as they can? They're doing it now before blocks. Maybe they have a way to kill the Siphoner because they don't want their Magda text. Now, Siphoner, when it dies, right, it gets shuffled in. That is not good for Uro because we're really close to casting Uro again, but we probably won't be able to next turn. I got a Chroma's Memorial. Crap. That's pretty good, but I mean, actually, is that good? Is that actually good? Well, we know what we're going to do. It's cost seven to recast that thing. They know what's coming. And we did draw Oracle, which is a pretty fun one to play. Now, nothing they have here has haste until after they replay Memorial. We could also play Tome and start digging. I'd say we play Oracle and get the power nine into the library and then work on drawing it. Magda, what do you know? Dwarves, you know it. Drum, you betcha. Make a treasure right now with the drum. They're on course to play the memorial next turn. So maybe we have to go Mega Shark Typhoon when they do. Because this thing is Flying First Strike, Vigilance, Trample, Haste, Protection from Black and Red. A giant shark can do it. Or we can hard cast the Shark Typhoon. <laughs> Start making baby sharks. But against the First Strike and the Trample, that's not very good. Whereas one huge shark gets blown up by the Golem. Oh man. What a, what a tough game. When in doubt, go blue. Otawara. Otawara Soaring City that we draw into off Shark Typhoon, potentially, or Insight. Uh, yeah, we can just bounce the Memorial. Oh, that's mean. Okay, done. If they go for it, of course. We also draw into it off Insight. We could. Can we still hard cast the Typhoon here? One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, no. Not and also do Insight, but we can play Tome. Um, the treasures return. You love Spring Leaf Drum for Magda. Really cool printing for it. They go for the Barbarian. Yeah, I guess they can destroy the Tome with that, huh? We could bounce our Tome. I think we just let it go. At least they didn't make a treasure. And people do fear the Tome of the Infinite. Giant growth could be interesting. Probably not something they'll expect. The infantry returns. <laughs> Deja vu all over again. Well, they didn't go for the big play, which is the memorial. But they are getting aggressive. Let's go for a five. Now we have something that can eat some dwarves. Nom, 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 nom. Ooh, Stifle, that can hit a Magda trigger. That's huge. That is huge. All right, Uro, come on out. I think 
Mm, yeah, let's leave the rebuke. It, it served us well last time. Old Otawara. We got a Mox Emerald, baby. You're in trouble now. I'm playing with power. No counterspell. Unless you count the stifle. Scary times. The Storm Kiln Artist. Another scary card. But they don't have that many instants or sorceries. It's just... It looks scary. Whoa! Okay, they're they're definitely planning something powerful here like Ember Cleave. Let's see it. Now we could bounce it with Otawara or just stifle this trigger. I think we just stifle this trigger. Got him. <laughs> what can you do? What can you do? Oh no, they all came to the slaughter. Oh baby. No, not like this, dwarves. Not like this. It was only a matter of time. Until something disgusting like that happened. Is that Ancestral Recall? Oh, well, that's pretty good. Ooh, baby. And then he had seven cards in hand all over again. And a Mox Pearl. So we're at 10. They have this Storm Kiln Artist. Something should block it. I guess I'll hold back the Siphoner for that job. Wouldn't mind shuffling it back into the library. That's a good card on top. All right, let's see what they can do with this turn. Make it memorable. It's Magda's last stand. Strike it rich. Let's go. See how far they can take this storm kiln artist. Here's Magda. There's Wash Away. You didn't think I could draw all those cards without a counter spell, did you? They are shrugging a lot. They are shrug masters. Scoop them up. <laughs> I thought, I thought we were dead in that game. There was a top deck. Um, I don't know how I do it, to be honest. Top deck cards like River's Rebuke out of the one of, out of the hundred plus, like the hundred card deck. But here we are. Do you smell what the rock is cooking? Our opponent bears the title of People's Champ, but they're running Terrigrid, God of Fright, which is a disgusting and evil commander, so I don't believe them. Um, however, we're ready for Terrigrid. Uh, we've got Exclude Memory Lapse, Decisive Denial. However, we're up against Black, which means that they usually spend their turn tearing your hand to pieces. So it doesn't really matter what's in our hand as long as we have enough land to play the things we draw. So this hand has that. We keep honestly you could look at your hand and it could just have a few a few pieces of trash like it could be five lands and two uncastable spells sometimes especially on the play you keep that against mono black because what happens they just use all their discard spells on it anyway they end up taking cards you couldn't cast anyhow and hopefully you draw into stuff which is the same situation you'd be in if you had kept a handful of castable spells We do have Decisive Denial and Memory Lapse on the play to fight Hand Hate. So let's fight it. Counters versus Hand Hate. Tale is all this time. So we could exclude this. I think we exclude and then Oracle. The, getting the... Ooh, okay. They go for Davriel. We got a counter for that. Feeling good, feeling good. Oh, Tamio, we... Tamio, the ultimate. The ultimate, really. It is an honor to meet you. So we should get something back. Should it be the land? Should probably be the memory lapse. Nah, no, just don't miss land. If we don't miss land, we'll win. So Tamio's passive says that we can't be forced to sacrifice permanence or discard cards. So that's gonna throw Teragrid off. That's... 
like the ultimate one up on that card. Uh huh. Did the opponent read the card? I don't know if they read the card. <laughs> what? So Narset, Narset probably got the most people from the War of the Spark Planeswalkers with the nasty passive. Teferi probably second most. But Tamio's up there. People would forget the Tamio. All right, what do we do with this turn? We've got two lands, so it's a good time for Uro. We're going to plus. If I Oracle of the Alpha, I can do something really cool. Um, but if I don't hit land with this Uro, I don't have exclude open for the tear grid, and I do need that. So I want to have exclude open. If I have exclude open, I'm not doing anything else. So, okay. We'll just plus Tamio. What does the optimist name here? Um, look at all these choices. Be a maniac, right? <laughs> I'm going to choose frilled mystic. Opponent, please let me embarrass myself by not hitting with my Tamio, please. Ooh, Sithis is nasty and only two mana. Uh, we do have a counter for it here. And then I guess the Tusker can get us up to four mana. So I guess we'll keep this hand. We do have to draw a green though, because we have to go get an island with this. So top deck green and we have potential the other thing we could do is mulligan if we mulligan we might hit a witness protection or a mystic sub duel uh, those are the best cards against Sithis. i'm gonna keep this um we're gonna go get blue we're gonna try to draw green in the top what two or three cards or draw two blue now remember we've got like 46 land in the deck should be doable it's like a coin flip every draw step Oop! I grabbed the wrong land. I grabbed the wrong land. I grabbed the wrong land. Oh god. Oh god, oh god, oh god. Okay, untap blue, untap blue, untap blue! No! Not like this! Not like this! Just a misclick, man. Just a misclick. No! Okay, and there's the green we needed! God! Oh, I'm so angry. Alright, recover. It's gonna be fine. It's gonna be fine gonna be fine i think i'm supposed to get the tusker going here let them have their extra land drop no they're drawing two cards a turn we can't allow that we gotta take a chance that we're gonna draw an untapped blue here we can't let them have multiple land drops a turn they'll get so far ahead Ugh. divide god we're losing we're already losing all right shake it off do I let them have one turn so that I have my lands? I think I do. Okay. Still need to draw more land, but Narset could be good if we can figure out a way to defend her. Weaver, ouch. curse Ugh. it's over man you miss you you do one land wrong you you just get distracted for a second and you play the wrong land or fetch the wrong land you misclick once you lose a game of historic brawl it is so punishing it is the toughest format to play well and that's why you, some people are cowards to play it good top deck can't afford to go for Narset here, so we pass. Well, we pulled together a two lander into five, but it was hard work. Fall the imposter. The heck? They changed the casting cost of this card? Broken. I'm gonna copy the card draw trigger, why not? What else they got? 
If I can get the siphoner down, I might be able to try to protect Narset. No attacks. End step. So we could divide by zero the Sithis or the Weaver and make them play it again. I don't think that's particularly impactful though. Let's go for the siphoner. Let's get rewind as it is a way to keep up on mana. And discard to hand size. Okay, we hit our land. That stupid curse. Uh, we can play Narset. Try to slow down this card draw from them. Focused and disciplined. Encounter no obstacles. With thoughtfulness before Rebuke. I want Reclamation too, but I think Rebuke is the elite best of the best that we could grab there. We might end up divide by zero on our own Narset if the opponent, you know, plays something that gets rid of this and tries to attack her down. Since we already have the rebuke. Yeah, pacifism. Cool. I could divide the pacifism by zero and block the weaver. I think that's even better. It's a little risky if they have instant speed removal, but their deck just doesn't really do that. Gonna decline here, even though I'm not sure if Disdainful Stroke will be great. If we bounce the Narset to our hand with the Divide by Zero, they get to resolve an enchantment and draw. We're trying to slow that stuff down. They play a Satyr Enchanter. They play a Candle Trap there, but it doesn't draw anything, so it's just to gain a life. It makes them a defender. Does that change our play? Because we could play this Kitten or this Uro. We have to tap out to play this Rebuke. But man, do we want to defend this Narset. Does, man, does casting this Rebuke actually help us? I think we play the Kitten. That candle trap, right? That candle trap on the Sithis means it can't attack the Narset, so they need the Enchanter to do it. So if they put any spell on the stack here, like the Pacifism, we get to reload the Narset with the Spell Pierce. And I think they will. They'll try. Yep. I won't forget our time. Boom. Five loyalty. Now I still gotta pay for it, or the kitten can block. Which I don't know. But just getting them to pay there is a bit of a win. Now can they grow the enchanter? Sometimes they have a card that gives plus plus. Yeah, there it is. Okay, so they do get rid of Narset. But we see that we got them down to three cards. Unfortunately, they still have these, and we need a way to get Narset back. Um, the kitten though, the kitten, we need something to pair with the kitten. I'm trying to figure out, can we hold off this enchanter somehow and buy more time? Or do we have to rebuke here? We rebuke, then they just replay Sithis, they replay enchanter, they replay curse, they draw two. Like that's not good. That's not good enough. I think we gotta burn the curse. They keep it. Now hope they go for something big here so that we can disdainful stroke it. I know I'm gonna take a lot of damage from the satyr. Okay, this is very bad. Please stop, opponent. Please stop. But yeah, I really want to blink this kitten, so I need them to put something on the stack for the disdainful stroke. That's not going to do it. Good lord. Nothing going right. 
Nothing going right at all. Just, oh. Everything going badly. Also, how do I have four of my forests? Because I fetched one on accident on turn one. Cascading effects. Just can't overcome that turn one misplay. If I had double blue here, it'd be so much better. Rawr! Go, kitty. I can't beat it. It's it's just too much value. That game don't don't mess up on turn one, guys. Don't do it. You can't you can't come back. Our opponent is playing Niv Mizzet Reborn, but we have Mystical Dispute, which is an awesome card against them. Narset Displacer, you know, those will probably do some good things too. It does also depend what they do, but usually Niv Mizzet is a lot of cheap removal spells and on the draw, not like a little bit of ramp. So they probably won't run us over with creatures. Tapped overgrown farmland from the opponent. I'm just gonna shock out the breeding pool now. It looks bad because we could probably find a window to play it tapped, but I'm telling you in Hellq, like of Historic Brawl, just get your colors right and be ready to counter stuff and play stuff right away. Every turn matters. There's no throwaway turns like in standard. And to the north, do we want to counter a ramp spell? Actually, yeah. We want to counter ramp spells against Niv Mizzet. They need to have their mana right. They need to have a lot of things right. This also lets us drop Narset. Tome or Essence Scatter? Let's take the Essence Scatter. A face-up way to counter their niv Mizzet Reborn. We're going to need a lot of that. They play Widespread Thieving. That's a good one. It's a hideaway that makes a treasure whenever they cast a multicolored spell, which their deck is very built around doing. Witness Protection. We got Salundi Vision and Disallow. Right now I need to make sure I hit my land drops. We'll take the Vision. No answer right now for the thieving. We don't want to play the kitten until we can protect the kitten. But kitten blinking Narset is really exciting. Probably around the six mana mark. And the opponent says go. Chemistry's inside a good filler here. We'll cast that this turn. Leave Uro where Uro is. Right now there aren't lands to ramp with. They know about that Essence Scatter. So they have to be able to pay the Wooburg after they create the treasure token. That's going to take a lot of mana to trigger off of Niv. They're not near that yet. But they go for it because I think it's pretty clear they don't have much else that they can do. Let's go ahead and use the Dispute while we can. Before it gets out manned by Widespread Thieving, it also lets us Insight this turn. Ooh, Wilderness Reclamation. Ooh, that's a good one. You think it'll stick, though? It's a good window. Let's uh, stop on end step. Go for it. So I don't actually have... I guess I have Insight, huh? Yeah, that's sick. Going to drop Witness Protection, because Witness Protection on the Dragon doesn't keep it from drawing all those cards when it enters, which is the main point of the card. Binding. Okay, now we have a permanent, so they're going to fight over it. We could go for the Kindred Denial. Yeah. They can't cast the Niv this turn. Let's go for the Kindred Denial. See if they can counter a counter in their Niv deck. They usually run some amount of counters. Yep, they have Absorb. Okay, so they win this fight. And they do get two treasures. And they'll get a land off Binding, which is really good. 
and they get Wilderness Reclamation off the board. But we're about to get the kitten down, and then it becomes a question of how much do they have to solve the kitten? Can they solve the kitten? Actually, we probably play Oracle first, don't we? And I think we're also at a point where we get Uro down. Yeah, so Oracle. A little bit of stick here. Makes me a little nervous to go for Uro. But the Power Nine's in the deck. Let's go for it. If they counter Uro there, we don't have the mana to cast the Essence Scatter. <laughs> we immediate, but the whole point of the sequence was we might draw a power nine, and we actually did. We actually did. Also, I wish I had set it up so that I'd have double blue here, but I don't think that was an option to if Uro was going to come down last. Know about this. Are they going to run Niv into it anyway? They're trying to figure out how to widespread thieving hideaway trigger. Which requires them to pay Wooberg after the resolution of this trigger. All right. Well, that is something I would have liked to counter, but okay. You ever listen to the Wolf up or kill Oracle? Kill Oracle. Rip. No card for you. Let's see how sharp my axe is. All right. I'd like a draw three. You draw a ghost quarter, which probably won't matter against them. I'm sure they have basics to fetch. I think it's kitten time. Kitten Narset, let's go. I'm sure they have some ways to try to remove it, but we'll blink it around. Wolf time? Wolf time. Oh! Teferi! Gross. Uh, counterspell. <laughs> Trigger Kitten, blink Narset. Despark the kitten. I will make disappear, targeting your despark. Which you can pay, but I'm going to flicker the kitten. And they don't have to pay now. They can just let that resolve. The treasures are piling up, though. If they can get enough to cast the Niv here... I think they're one short, though. You are a mighty I can, those who cannot... Our set reloads to fairy gets countered. Widespread thieving. Ooh, you can get that hideaway. You could sack those treasures for that hideaway right there. They didn't do it, though. The prismatic bridge. That's amazing. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> the annul. Snap that off. Try to beat me with the prismatic bridge. What's wrong with these people? Don't they know that that doesn't ever actually happen? Take the defabricate? It, I think it stops the hideaway trigger. Here's a row. And another land. We could hit them with the rebuke. But I don't even think that's necessary here. Just reloads their Garrick. Yeah, we, we can pass here. Only two blue. Opponent down to just their commander. That's not going to resolve. You love to see it. Let's reload Narset. And the trigger. Oh, okay. I can't counter that. And what do they have here? A Tybalt. 
Nasty. Okay. They didn't give me... If I had the option, I missed it. But I guess it's before they pay. So they get the option to pay afterwards. So it wouldn't even be a good defabricate target. However, what is a good defabricate target is this Tibble's Trickery Trigger. You cannot run or hide. Where is it? Yeah, they're trying to exile cards from the library. If I rebuke them... Man, I wish I could just rebuke the wolves. But I think I'm going to have to rebuke them, so... Let's defabricate the trigger. And blink the Uro. This will cause Uro to die. But we'll decline to put Uro in command. Opponent can attack the Narset with the wolves. But we will just reset the Narset with our rebuke. Okay, they don't even do that. Mass manipulation. That's better than rebuke. Come here, boys. <laughs> Join the Uro side. We have cookies. And that's the game. Well, against Sithis? I, ugh. Okay, got a mulligan. It's one of the nightmare matchups for us. We do go first here and we get to counter Sithis, so we keep. Oh, please hold that. Please hold that Fable Passage. I want to Stone Rain that Fable Passage very badly. We'll take the island. Yes, look at them saving it. Crack on end step. Big brain, right? Biggest brain. Get out. Yes. Yes, that's what you get making me wait. That's what you get. Um, we have to Tails end the Harvest Hand here. In Search of Greatness, we'll get a Spell Pierce. Let's see if we can draw a land here. If we can, we can play Uro. Cool. Fable Passage. I'm, I'm going to show you how to Fable Passage, dude. You do it right now. <laughs> right freaking now. When you can. Stifle is in the format. Oh, you think that's nice? Just you wait. Just you wait. We're coming right at you. Now, I'm sure they'll have some kind of way to remove this, but you start the Uro party somewhere. Birth. The birth of Militus, okay. And the teachings of the Kirin. Okay, they didn't have a Banishing Light style effect to get rid of Uro. That's awesome. That is awesome. Start getting our cards on. I know you want a hard cast Shark Typhoon. You won't have it. It's definitely a matchup and a game, basically Uro, a commander that wants you to put cards in your graveyard. Annoyed procession. Rewind. Six. Okay. Revenge. Isika. We have Tails End, so we'll keep. Also got Tome, which I don't know. I the more I've played Tome in this deck, the more I could take it or leave it. Signet on two. Okay. We 
and bottom that land. I think we've got enough land going on. Negate, sweet, more bridge disruption. They've already got their world tree, Celestis. That's a frustrating card. Let's go ahead and tails end that. Since it is legendary and negate can hit many more things. Could drop the Narset, but then they drop the bridge. We don't have an easy answer to the bridge yet. This is where being on the draw, you just have to sit back. And if they're smart, they play around your stuff. which can sometimes lead to them resolving important permanents that take over the game. But if they just don't have them and they stunt their own development, then you end up doing okay. Looks like our opponent doesn't have it, at least right now. Into the north, something we're happy to see resolve. They are in the tank here, but they are passing. Okay. Memory Deluge online, Kindred Denial online. A three mana permanent if we counter this. And they do have extra mana. I think we fight. All right, not permanent spell, three mana spell. And they're gonna cast Asika as the creature to try to make some mana. Sure. So Uro here could be a lot of tapped land. I think we just need to keep the mana open. We got Hall of the Storm Giants and their world tree is online. They could be Oops All Gods version of Asika. With the world tree, that's very dangerous. You want to have like a stifle or a disallow ready. They go for Cruelty of Gix. Nope. <laughs> Shut that down. Take our one. It's nice that they're not holding the bridge over our head anymore. All right, Uro, your time has come. Leave you in the graveyard. Okay, already played land. Easy to lose track. Yeah, if they, like, power up Hall here and start hitting that way, it could be a lot of pressure really fast, but they're not going to. Touching the lands, what does it mean? It means Jingataxius! Bridge Jingataxius. You freaking memers, you can't beat me that way. I have never once lost a game to Prismatic Bridge Jingataxius, and I will be taking no questions. All right, Uro, come on out. Hit. Green, there is four green, which is usually all you need. But without a counter spell here, I'm thinking about running out the Narset. And yeah, let's do it. Grab the Seagate. Although the Swan Song, definitely a defendable pick. Oh, baby. <laughs> okay. Okay. Has anybody ever beaten an emergent ultimatum before? Wow. Talk about the card in their hand that we, that could just win the game. The absolute best. So Vorinclex, Liliana, Time Warp. If we put away the Time Warp, they get a Vorinclex and a Liliana. I think that's beatable, call me crazy. So they minus the Liliana, they kill the Uro. They poke the Narset. And then I need to figure out a way to beat a Vorinclex that is on the board. Or 
I could give them like Liliana Time Warp. They make me get rid of my Uro. If I give them Vorinclex Time Warp, I lose that way. Yeah, I'm gonna put away the Time Warp. I'm gonna hope I draw something to deal with the Vorinclex. If I do, I've got a chance. I get a free look from Narset. Okay, they didn't even kill the Uro. Which, wow, they didn't kill the Uro. All right, come on, solve the Vorinclex. Wow, not what I needed. <laughs> really not what I needed. Um, That's not lucky. <laughs> Let's try again. That's not lucky. All right, we're gonna have to cast this anyway. Oh, that's interesting against Vorinclex, right? It really is. Doesn't fix everything, but it fixes something. All right, let's see what we can deluge up. And line up the shot, stifle key to the archive? Why is there nothing in my deck that solves this? And I mean nothing. Uh, I guess you and you. <laughs> They're gonna have double mana. Will they have things to do with it? They get to draw a card here from Liliana. Narset's on the field for now. Play you, play you. Not every day you see all those lands in chains and also untapped. I said resolve all. Why is this so hard? Gosh, I can't find anything to kill this or deal with this Vorinclex. Do I have nothing? Do I have nothing in my library? Defabricate. Um, don't think that'll save me. Mystical dispute? Uh, I think I just have to say go now. I could still flash this back, but I'm not going to hit like a one mana play that does the job. All right, let's see what else the opponent has up their sleeve. We are at 33. Our lands don't untap. Their lands tap for double, which double is good. It's a, double is a really good number. Oh, are they going to activate the world tree? I'm ready. I'm ready. <gasps> they are an oops all gods. Defabricate. No fun for you. Oh, counter it. Counter it. Counter it. Come on. Yes. Yes. I mean, what do you think is in this hand? It doesn't kill Vorinclex, it kills the stack. Oh, they tapped it for mana. They can't get rid of Narset. Where are you going? I still couldn't kill the Vorinclex. <laughs> they were so defeated by losing a counter match with their Vorinclex on the battlefield that they left the game. I beat an Emergent Ultimatum, resolved. That should be an achievement unlocked. Uh, Uro, Uro is a freaking machine. What a really, I mean, if you like countering spells and drawing cards, what a deck where you just get all that engine from the command zone and you get to play big mana stuff in the late game. I highly recommend Uro. I think it's an S tier commander that is currently paired in the A tier, which means that you win a lot more than you should. So by all means, grab the sweet Uro list and go tear up the competition. Uro, Uro. Thank you for watching this competitive historic brawl video. As always, I will see you in the next one. You stayed till the end, so remember to comment, remember to like, remember to subscribe. You're cool.